Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Visibility Era. It is your host, Bridget Cisco. I am without Lydia today, but that's okay because we have a really cool guest on. We're going to do a little bit of a different take for today's episode, and it's all about a peek into a company's and a brand's visibility journey. So welcome interior designer, Michelle. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. Glad to be here. This will be super fun. I'm excited. You know, how's your day going so far? I love to start with just what's your day oh like? Gosh. Um, I am in, it is the holidays and I am in like the thick of the holidays, like working till seven, no time for exercise or eating that kind of, you know, picking up wrapping paper on the way to drop off a package four minutes before UPS closes. Like that's, that's my week. That's my day, <laughs> but good. Mm -hmm. We're good. Every, mm -hmm. We're here. We're here. Yeah, <laughs> we're here. This will be a a good little like reprieve because you'll get to more so like reflect on yeah how did I start this company and as I mentioned to you you know normally these episodes we're we're interviewing uh, TV producers or editors of magazines to help people understand how to get more visible but we were like this would actually be really cool to do more of a deep dive into what does it actually look for a company to mm -hmm. get more publicity get more visibility to get more eyes on what they're doing so why don't you take us down memory lane. Yeah. Did you always expect to be an interior designer? Oh my gosh, never. <laughs> never. <laughs> so as a kid, I loved decorating. I definitely had like the sponge painted purple walls. I don't remember if they were lime green or purple walls. Maybe my um, blow up chair was purple, I think. You remember those? Mm -hmm. Um, and I was always rearranging my furniture. My mom would like at some point my mom just gave up and was like, do whatever. I don't care. Cause I would do it. And then in college, I babysat like my main income, high school, really middle school, high school, college was babysitting and nannying. And I would like, with their permission, rearrange furniture or like help hang stuff on the walls or give them ideas. Like it was always super fun to me. But I grew up in super white suburbia. And in the idea of like, helping older women pick out throw pillows sounded and like, thousands of dollars on curtains sounded like an actual nightmare and like an ethical conflict to me. <laughs> so I was like, I'll never be an interior decorator, but it's like a hobby. Um, so yeah, I kind of, I, I never thought that I would end up there for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. I, I remember, um, looking at your website before we came on to the, the episode today and I was like, raise my hand. I was also that child who rearranged their room all the time. I had every single different color on my wall. I had the pink sponge. I think that yes. was like one of the first colors on the wall. Then yes. I went lime green because why yes. not? Yes. I bet. I bet we had the same lime green. Why not? <laughs> God bless so, our moms. so funny. I know. And she was like, what are you doing? But I think there was something, and I noticed this and I would love to hear your take on this. Like there was something about moving things yeah. in my room. And I don't think I had the um, language for it then, but it shifted energy. It moved absolutely. things around. It was a different perspective. Yes, absolutely. I think especially as creatives or I don't know, just people, I think we need to shift some energy. And I talk about that all the time um, with clients and just in general of, of how you can change the energy in your space by moving things around, changing things, especially, and I'm sure we'll get to this, but especially after a traumatic event or something difficult in life, just needing change in your mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, totally. So early on, you're like, I love moving around things in my room. I love repainting. My mom just has to let me do what I need to do. You were babysitting, but you never saw yourself, you know, redecorating these, these women's uh, throw pillows and curtains. So <laughs> what happens after that? Like, where do you go? Are you in college yeah. studying this? No. So I actually went to school um, and studied nonprofit youth development at Texas A&M. And I thought I was going to save the world. Like I was going to do meaningful, impactful work. And I did for about five years. I started my career in youth nonprofit, um, specif specifically with youth aging out of the foster care system. And so it was really hard, heavy work. I was reading um, child abuse stories day after day. Um, it was very taxing work. and But I loved it and it was meaningful. And I knew I was making an impact on the world. Uh, I mean... I didn't know I was making, I was trying to make an impact on the world. The system, the foster care system, just like every other governmental system is super flawed. Um, but it was during that time, um, I was about 25, 26, that I took my first like real adult vacation. I went on a cruise with six girlfriends, five girlfriends, there were six of us total. And just trigger warning for anyone like 
um, my story does involve sexual assault. So just take care of yourself if you're listening to this and need to tune out or whatever. Here's your out. I won't go into detail, but um, I went on a trip with five girlfriends to just take a break, take a break from work and take care of myself. I like finished this big milestone um, at work and took a week off. And while I was on that cruise um, right outside of Jamaica, I was actually assaulted by two men um, one night on the ship. And I came back from that trip. And as you can imagine, my entire world was flipped upside down. So I went from being someone who takes care of others, who um, not just in my job, but in my life and my family, with my friends, with my church, like I was the caretaker and the leader and, and I was completely undone completely undone. So I came back and was diagnosed with PTSD and had all these triggers. And I really, that year took an entire year to care for myself. I left my job because I literally couldn't, I just could not. Mm -hmm. Um, thankfully, um, my parents were able to support me through a lot of that season financially, which was a huge gift. So many, um, survivors don't have that you know, that asset in their pocket. And that made all the difference in the world. Um, and I really took a year to heal. Um, there's someone in my life who's much further along in their sixties and something similar happened to them at a young age and they never went to therapy or took time to heal. And it still greatly impacts them today. And I just remember getting back from that trip and saying, I will not be in that position. I will take mm -hmm. all the time and energy and effort to heal now so that this does not impact every day of my life for the rest of my life. Um, and I will heal from this. And so during that season, that year, I, Bridget, I did everything I could to create healing and, you know, healing isn't something we can just like necessarily make happen, but there are steps towards healing that we can take. And it was really this process of, I mean, I went to therapy twice a week. I went to a private, um, workout class with like a couple girlfriends where I would literally scream and cuss and break stuff to get anger out. <laughs> it was amazing. Very therapeutic. Um, I did yoga. I went to the mountains and stayed with a friend for a week to see beauty and like be surrounded mm -hmm. by things that were bigger than me and felt bigger than my own problems. Um, I had an amazing support group. My brother's a therapist and that was huge just to have someone in my corner to advocate to my family. Like this is what she needs. This is what she doesn't need. Um, and the other thing I did that year was physically shifted my space. Just like you were saying, the energy, I got houseplants for the first time. And this was before houseplants were trending, you know, <laughs> you know? um, I got houseplants. I detoxed like chemicals and toxins. And I, I literally did anything and everything. I signed on to the MLM essential oils thing. Yeah. Like I literally did anything and everything. Someone said, this is what will help you on your healing journey. But what I really did, Bridget, was set up a space of healing. Like I set my outer space, this physical world, I set this physical world up in a way of healing and, and, and what I needed internally. And, and it shifted everything internally. And it was really during this season, I had the closest thing to a calling I've ever had in my life where I realized, oh my gosh, I could do this for other people. I could help other people create or cultivate mm -hmm. spaces of healing. And so that's really where Cultivate Your Space was born, was this idea of helping people create healing spaces and intentionally letting go of things in their home that don't serve them, shifting the energy in their space and bringing in things with intention, not a throw pillow because it's trendy, not redoing your house because your neighbors, you know, you need to keep up with the neighbors or keep up with the Joneses, whatever. But yeah, that's, I know that's a long story, but that's where everything shifted. That's where it all changed. Wow. Well, thank you for like sharing that with us. Um, wow. 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 It's, it's interesting. I am also a yoga teacher and oh, cool. I love to serve like underserved communities. So I work in the addiction recovery space and, cool. you know, you said something that like reminds me of a parallel with what a lot of them say 
is that we're never really given um, the space to take the time back for ourselves, to take our energy back, oh. to figure out like who the heck we are and yeah. giving ourselves that space is such a blessing. And although we'd never wish the, wish the trauma or the pain or the hurt like oh. on another person, there is the silver lining of you had that time. Like yeah. that is such a gift and something so beautiful was, you know, birthed out of that. So wh where did, when did the business like actually begin after that? Were you just like helping yeah. friends and family? Was it just your space? Yeah. So at that point and during that season where I was working, I mean, I legit was working 10 to 15 hours a week, like a very <laughs> like basic job. Mm -hmm. um, and so on the side, I was decorating for friends, like really as kind of a therapy, like, I don't know, pay me $200. I don't know. Like people were selling their homes and I would help them stage it or whatever. So I think it was, let's see, my business didn't start officially for another like three years after that. But it was, um, it was during that time that I kind of started dabbling with the idea of getting paid to do this. So it started as a hobby and like really like a therapy and then it became a paid hobby and then it became a well-paid hobby and then it became a career. Mm -hmm. And at what point, like, did you create the website and all the socials to start like being seen of like, I am Michelle and I'm the founder of a company. <laughs> So it's funny that year, actually, I started, it's, I haven't thought about this in a long time, but I, I started something called known designs. It was like, okay, it was like about being known and that wasn't it, but I started in January. So the cruise was in May and in January, I kind of had this like soft launch of an Instagram page. I was like, I'm just going to kind of play with this, made a fake logo, all of that. And it just like, didn't work. It like totally flopped. It was not it was not it. And I felt, and I even like went and got a normal job six months later because I was like, I'm not going to do this. This is, I, it's taking away the fun to feel like it's a business. But then something shifted in, I guess, three or four years later that was like, no, this is it. This is absolutely it. This is what I'm doing. And so I think it was 2018, May of 2018, that I like had enough people coming in wanting me to do this. I quit my other job. Um, I made a website, I got a logo branded, did the whole thing. So it's been about six years somehow. I don't know that that adds up 2018, but it's been about six years. <laughs> it's been official. We're fine. We're fine with the math. Um, yeah. yeah super math. interesting to see girl math, girl math. Uh, <laughs> if Lydia were here, she would love that. Cause she loves like TikTok and all these like trending <laughs> things. And I'm like a grandma who like sits under a like, rock. And I'm like, what Lydia? <laughs> I love that. You got to have one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I love like hearing the trajectory and it's always a non-linear path. And I think this is helpful yes. for anyone listening. Like it's not like you, you, you kind of like dabbled, right? You kind of like were in and out and it took you a little bit of time to be like, no, 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 I am doing this. And this is going to be a full-time career. Like what was going through your mind when you also thought about, I'm going to leave my, you know, more maybe stable job. I don't know what we would call it to do entrepreneurship. Oh, fear. Absolutely fear. And it, I honestly didn't even think it would work. Like it was kind of a shot in the dark. And what I tell, so I get a lot of like 20, 25 year olds that are like, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. Tell me how to do it. And I'm like, just don't like, <laughs> just, I'm like, go get a real job. Come back when you're 30 and let's talk. Like it is so hard. It is so, so hard. And it, there's nothing, I think there's like this glamorization of like CEO, girl boss, blah, 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 entrepreneurship that I'm like, you have no freaking clue what you're signing up for. No clue. So go get a job, work for someone, figure out how to be on time somewhere. And then let's talk in five years. Um, that's like end soapbox. But the first two years, even after I started, I left my job, I was officially a business. I got a website. The first two years, I babysat my two-year-old niece to make income three days a week, five days a week. I don't remember what it was, but it was like a part-time job was keeping my two-year-old niece and I Airbnb'd my house. Like, and I think there was probably more than that that I did. Like, I remember at some point telling my sister-in-law, I have like six jobs and I don't know how to keep doing what I'm doing. So it was, there was no glamorization to it. It was I would say the past four years, 
I've been full time, a hundred percent cultivate your space. And that feels amazing, but it was a, it was a rocky journey to get here for sure. And it still is. It's not like I, you know, it's, it's still, it's still rocky. There's no, there's no easy path. Yeah. Like you said. I love that you, um, share the real, real, because I'm so passionate about this topic. I'm like, this is not rainbows and daisies. What you see on Instagram, there's so much more going on behind the scenes. Like this is not, they're just, yeah, we could go on to a, yes. a wild tangent of that, but yes. <laughs> I love, yeah, I love keeping it real. It is absolutely a journey. There have been many moments where I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> um, you know, I could just go get a, a really well-paying job and never right. think about things again, but I love creativity. I love freedom, you know, so it, it know. keeps within it. Yeah, it does. It's totally the thing. Um, okay. So with what you're doing now, you know, a lot of our clients, a lot of people who listen to this show, there is a little bit of that fear of being seen, especially when you first start the business, right? Like when people from high school all of a sudden see that you're, you know, you're running a business, they're like, mm, who? Uh, interesting. <laughs> Was um, it all levels? Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Did you ever deal with any of that, that fear of being seen of what people might think of you? Did that ever come up for you? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I'll be completely honest. I don't, I think my like deepest insecurity is not being seen. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think I, I, I mean, that's, it's like a bit of, I read somewhere that like to be an entrepreneur, you have to have a bit of narcissism to think mm -hmm. that like you could succeed at something. And I feel that, like, I feel like, no, I was made for something different. Like I was made to do something on my own off beaten path. And so I don't, I think I probably struggle with the opposite of like, not a fear of being seen like oh what are they going to think of me it's probably more a fear of not being seen so a fear of being forgotten a fear of not standing out a fear of not making a difference in the world a fear of people forgetting about me a fear of being alone like i don't i think i would much rather be on a stage <clears throat> than i would be alone in a corner if that makes any sense I mean, totally. That's, that's me. And I've always had that stubborn. I always thought it was like a stubbornness. Cause I just like go for it. You know, I yeah. don't really think I'm just like, no, I'm meant to like, just, you know, yeah. shoot for the moon kind of person. But, um, yeah, it, it's very interesting because some people have the opposite. They're like, who am I to do this? There's so many other yeah. interior decorators, like they're better than me, yada, yada. Yeah. I don't know if, do you know your, um, do you know your astrology? Like <laughs> any idea what your signs I, are? Like a, I think I know I'm a Scorpio. Is that what you mean? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Me and Lydia both have like Leos in our chart, which are like very much like being seen kind of people. So okay. I was just curious. Yeah. No, I do think like my, honestly, my biggest, my bigger insecurity or fear has been from people that know me best because my closest friends, my very best friends, all three of them are very grounded, like teachers and nurses. Mm -hmm. And they're like, like they have budgets and they don't do anything without a plan. And I'm out here like sharing my food on Instagram. And they're like, why is that necessary? <laughs> like who gives a shit what you're eating? You know? And I'm like, guys, it's part of the brand. <laughs> and they're like, can you just like go get a job? Like, can you just go work for another, you know? So the harder part has been my closest friends who love me so much. I, this is no like accusation against them, but they're so grounded and they're what keeps me grounded. And they're the ones that come in and are like, you don't need to redo your website right now. Like, why don't you budget for that? Like, you know, and they're, they're probably my bigger, like, that's probably been the bigger conflict about being seen is they ask questions that make me really become more introspective about like, why am I sharing my food? Like, why, why does somebody need to know that I bought a $14 cocktail. Like they make me think about those things and not in an insecure way, but they kind of ground me. And I think, but that has led to some processing of insecurity of like, oh, am I just narcissistic? Am I just, which by the way, my therapist says you can't be a narcissist if you're asking if you're a narcissist. Yes. So I like that. <laughs> She's like, you're already showing yourself aware if you're asking me that question. I'm like, Okay, great. But they, that is where I do tend to get a little insecure and like wonder what am I doing is when my friends who know me best are like, Hey, slow it down. Like, 
you don't need to post that much, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. So they keep, think they keep it real. They love me. Sometimes those people like hold the, hold the mirror to us and they know us and that's why, you know, they're yeah. just like, exactly, exactly. They're allowed to, they've earned their keep for 20 years. Yeah. They're allowed. <laughs> Um, let's talk a little bit about, you know, your actual services. Cause one thing I, I was thinking about when, um, I was interviewing you, I was like, oh, I wonder if she's like location based or if she can work virtually. And I do see that you very much have a virtual, virtual business. So tell us a little bit more about your services with Cultivate Your Space. Yeah. So my main service is give me the vision. Um, and that works virtually or in person. My business was completely in person until 2020, obviously. And then everything shifted and I had to figure out how to become an online business. So I came out with an e-course, which is still available. Um, and the e-course is all about like kind of, a, it's kind of like a crash course in DIY, like very simple girly DIY, like how to paint a wall, how to hang curtains, how to choose a rug size. Mm -hmm. Um, that kind of thing. But my biggest offer is give me the vision and we take one space. I mean, you can take as many spaces as you want, but it's priced per space. Um, and we do a consult. You come up with a Pinterest board where I get to see your style. Um, you upload a, a very basic floor plan where I, you like sketch out on a piece of paper picture. This is how your space flows. And then we get on a video call or in person and we talk through your style, your needs, your budget. And the biggest thing that I think differentiates me from other designers is the thing I talk most about is the intention of your space. Mm -hmm. What is, I care a lot about function and feel. So a lot of designers just care about how a space looks and how it presents, but the things I care most about, of course, how it looks, it's gonna be beautiful. That's like a given, I'm a decorator, but I care a lot about how it functions, how it functions for you, how it functions for the family and how it feels and the purpose of the space, the intention. So I'm going to design an office completely different than a bedroom because the intention of an office is productivity, productivity, inspiration. Um, and the purpose of a bedroom is relaxation, intimacy, like unwinding. And so how it works is we do a consult. I get all the information from you. I ask a lot of questions. And I think kind of my, I'm kind of just discovering this, but I think my giftedness in this area, area is, um, oh gosh, I just lost the word. Oh man. What do you call it? It's like, uh, oh my innovation? gosh. It's innovation? No, it's not innovation. Oh, I just had like a total brain. Intuition. Thank you. Yes. is like my intuition. So when I'm walking with someone through their space or on a video call, I kind of like, I think I'm a very intuitive person, which I think comes from like my nonprofit work and like being able to really sit with people in hard situations and hard feelings um, and my own story, obviously, but really being able to be attuned to what someone really needs from their space and what they're feeling. So if I have a client who suffers from depression, um, their space and the intention of their space is going to be completely different than my client who just got divorced and their kids stay with them on weekends and they want their space to be like uplifting and fun and encouraging and homey. You know, it's, it's just, and not that those two contradict each other, but the intention of the space is kind of completely based on my intuition of meeting with you, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then from there, I build out a vision board and the vision board is a PDF where you see everything. It's this beautiful display of everything that's going to be in the space. And it can include things that you already own and things that you love because I want to incorporate bits of you that you already have. And then um, everything is clickable. So I'll tell you like buy this rug and you would literally click the rug and it would take you to the site to buy the rug. And I'll I give you all the details. Um, and what I love about that is I think a lot of interior design is like consumerism, new, buy everything, get it all now, flip a house. And with this process of give me the vision, what I do for clients is give them the vision and then they execute it over their own timeline. So some of my clients take three years to renovate their living room because they're going to get the rug today, but they're not going to buy the sofa for another two years until their mm -hmm. husband gets the bonus or whatever, you know? So I love that, that it can be executed over time. I love that. And it just feels like such a beautiful creative process. Like I looked through your website and just some of your, your pictures, like your work is, is absolutely beautiful. Um, so yeah. 
props to props to what you're doing. And even like your background of this video, I'm like, yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> All the plants. I'm like in a little All jungle. All the, All the plants. Um, so let's go into like what worked for you to get this brand more visible. You know, were you were you connecting with people locally? Did you do ads like for that e-course? Were you using hashtags on social media? You know, what were you really doing to grow uh, the awareness of your brand? Okay. So this is a whole conversation right now. Um, I've never paid for anything. I've never paid for any kind of marketing ads, Facebook, Instagram, anything like that. Google ads. Um, I lived in a college town. I actually just moved to Austin six months ago, but when I started my business and the first, you know, five and a half years of my business, I lived in a mid-sized college town and I kind of knew a lot of people. Um, but the biggest, okay, I did two things in the very beginning that I think really launched my business. One was I had these in-home workshops, um, mm -hmm. where it was almost like a Tupperware party <laughs> where a woman would get like. 10 of her friends together and we'd have like snacks or drinks or whatever at their house. And I would host a little workshop. And so the workshop was about cultivate a space of intention. And it basically was like my shtick. Like it was, this is my story. This is what I do. And I gave them tips. Like, and honestly, my, um, I have a, my freebie, like my giveaway, what do you call it? Lead magnet, um, mm -hmm. on my site is how to cultivate a space of, in of intention. It's an ebook. I haven't changed that since the start of my business six years ago. I'm working on something new now, but it's about like my four step process and how to, how to cultivate a space of intention. And it's about letting go and bringing in new things with intention. Um, and so I did these workshops and at that workshop, I would get their email. They put their name and their email down. And then one of them might want to host one in their home. Like, oh, this was so fun. I got so many ideas and it, it was free. We didn't charge anything. We had a little like craft with essential oils. Like we'd make, like you could choose a blend to make yourself, um, to take home, to kind of set an intention in your space. Um, that, and then I did, I think I did one. Well, you know, what would happen is these women would go home and they would like start cleaning out their closets or cleaning out mm -hmm. their pantry. They would post it on at that time, Facebook or some Instagram and tag me. And then all their friends would see it yeah. and they'd be inspired. It was also around the time that Komari show came out on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So I think Netflix, I think that helped because um, people were thinking about their space in a new way. Um, and then Instagram at the time, Instagram worked. I, I will be honest. It doesn't work for me today. Um, and at the time, Instagram was word of mouth. So if, Lydia posts a picture of her living room that I just helped with. And she tags me and says, Michelle came over and my space feels refreshed and beautiful. And it was affordable. And I'm, I'm done. All of Lydia's friends are like, oh, I've been looking for somebody. Or I didn't even know I could have. Oh, Lydia can afford this. Maybe I could afford this. Um, and so Instagram was it. Like that was, that was it. Um, in the past few years, Google just like in the town I moved from, I was like number two and, and it was a mid-sized town. There's not like Austin. I'm not even ranked. Like it's, I'm, it's insane. But Google was another, like I had a lot of Google reviews and that helps. Um, so that's kind of how it got started in the beginning, Instagram, Facebook, in-person events. And all of that again was before the pandemic, when we used to go to people's homes, you know, I, I remember it well. I, um, I've lived a lot of lifetimes in this lifetime, Michelle. My mom and I used to run a business called the Bucha Babes, where we taught people how to make their own kombucha and their own sauerkraut and like how to make healthy. Yeah. Yeah. It was so cute. It was great. We had people at our home. And again, that word of mouth thing and be like, oh, yeah, that mother and daughter does this, you know, and, and I was using Instagram a lot of the time. So I really, really resonate. And this was 2017, 2018. So exactly. That really right. resonate with you. So I guess a and good question would be, <laughs> but it was different. It was so, so, so different. Like what, now that Instagram has definitely changed and, you know, what are you thinking of doing in 2024 oh to, to change um, since we can't keep up with all these algorithm shifts and all that? Yeah. We can't, I don't know. I mean, you tell me, I don't know. I'm, I started email marketing this year, which I had been growing my list for the past couple of years, but I hadn't been consistent this year. I've been consistent of 
emailing my people. I'm still on Instagram. I'm still posting. It's still my favorite. Like Instagram stories are the easiest, the most natural for me. Um, I have been, I, I've done some public speaking in the past year where honestly, it's kind of the workshop um, uh, content that I did in the very beginning, nothing. And that's what feels great is nothing's really changed about me and my brand. I've shifted over time and changed my rates or changed my offer. But like the core message of who I am and what my business is hasn't changed, which feels really good to me. Um, and so I've done a few like keynotes over the past year of, um, the main issue is I don't know how to get and podcasts. That's been another big thing this year that I've shifted is podcasts um, and, and finding like-minded individuals to be on their podcasts and share with their audience. So that's, I mean, and this is all like me shooting in the dark. I'm literally just trying stuff and, and trying stuff that feels natural to me. I'm not a writer. I've tried blogging and I'm like, this is, this is not it. This is not it. Um, I'm trying Pinterest also probably not it. So it, it's all shooting in the dark at this point. Yeah. But okay, I love your honesty. Yeah. Also trying to figure out though, like I said, what feels intuitive to me. So public speaking, speaking, podcasts, that feels like my natural form of communication. Writing blogs doesn't. So stop trying. It feels like stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. You know, <laughs> I'm never going to be <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it because I think this is helpful for people to listen to. You know, there's never one right way of doing anything. I'm very similar to you. I love anything speaking. Like, get me in front of people. Let me teach on a topic. I will feel alive. And they're going to have the best experience because they're going to, you know, receive something from someone who's super excited about whatever they're teaching or sharing. So I've always been, you know, team podcast, team speaking, team interview, team, team, all of that, team workshop, especially in person, um, because honestly, it just does the best for me you know, yes. outside of just visibility on purpose. Yeah. Well, and Bridget, can I just say, I think we live in a world where, I don't know, I feel like marketing, and, and this sounds like so blanket statement, and I don't mean it in like every marketing person, I don't mean that at all. But I think a lot of these like girl boss marketing, blah, 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 want to tell us like, this is what you need to be doing. As a business owner, you need to be blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, hey, guess what? I know my business more than you do. Like, so everything. And I think I've made some really big mistakes in that area of giving to people, giving some people too much trust in my business, a business coach, a marketing expert, whatever, and saying like, you told me to do this. I'm going to do this because this is what makes a business successful when in reality, just like every other area of our life, we get dating advice. It's only as helpful as like what works for us. Like we have to figure out intuitively what works for my business, my personality, my audience, my people. And because here's the deal. If it feels unnatural to you, your audience is going to know. <laughs> like when you speak or you talk on a podcast and you come alive and there's energy, people sense that. When you see someone doing a keynote and they have notes and they're shaking and they just like have gone to the bathroom six times in the past five minutes, we all know and it's uncomfortable for everybody. Just go right, right? Like, I just think there's so much like, I don't know. I just think like intuition is the biggest gift we have in life and as business owners. Absolutely. I think intuition and discernment because we do live in the age of information and there's there's oh so gosh. much at our fingertips. Like. I can teach myself how to do anything. We're teaching ourselves how to do ads for our own business. We want to test yeah. it out. Um, obviously, I'm going to learn that. But again, it's this, I think discernment is our strongest, yeah, our, our strongest skill, intuition, discernment, being able to ask ourselves what's right and true for us. And I do think everything is shifting where, you know, where people were originally investing into business coaches and these types of things. They're probably going to invest in their team going forward, like actually hiring mm -hmm people um, who can support their vision to move forward instead of like paying people. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I still value, I think I still value all of those things, but it's also about finding the people that have that message. Like I found a couple people in marketing or coaching lately that believe in intuition and, and, and energy and those sorts of things of like, I'm going to say this, but you have to figure out what works for your business. The absolutes are what 
are a turn off to me at this point. Like everybody, every business owner should be, I'm like, don't, don't, my brother says, don't shit all over me. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's funny. Um, I love this. Um, Give us kind of what you're focused on in your business. Like what are some of your goals for 2024 and where can people find you? Yeah. So my goals for 2024 right now, I'm currently redoing my website. I hired somebody to redo my website and kind of give a little brand update. I've actually true confessions, never hired somebody to do my site. It's been, I started on Squarespace with a template and kind of, <laughs> did you too? Yeah. yeah I just made like it the same person. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah. Just kind of like made it work for the past six years. And so it feels good to like hire a professional. She's so great. Um, and that's in the works right now. And so right now my main focus is here's what I'll say. I think my business and my life has taken a huge elevation this year. I moved to Austin, which is like my spirit city. I'm so alive here and I love it. And the clientele is much more me here. Um, I've raised my rates in my business, which was very hard to do. Um, but I think the right, the right thing to do, I'm still, there's still a little hesitation in my voice. (laughs) Um, it's hard. It's hard. Um, but I think I've done all these things kind of maybe internally to elevate my business. And right now I'm working on elevating my business externally, I guess. So like the brand, the website, um, I don't know. I I don't know if that makes any sense, but kind of put this like new face to the business that's still the same, but has this like leveled up look. And I'm really excited about that. And I think in the same way, changing the energy of our physical space can help change our own internal energy. I kind of feel that with my business of like, I think this little business refresh is going to be good for me to be like, I do deserve this rate. I am going to book out this year. Um, and then the other thing is like, I want to have other offers. I just haven't figured out. I don't know. There's something about like walking people through the process of their home, like that I, I just haven't figured out yet. So that's just, to be honest, I'm like kind of open and exploring like what would that look like to do more, like, almost like coaching with your home? But I don't even know. That's not a thing. So trying to figure that out. We have a, a past student who talks about like the home's consciousness and she helps people who aren't selling their home basically like clear the energy in their house. You should yeah. talk to her. That could be a cool thing. <laughs> yes. yes. I love that. Yeah. Very cool. So smart. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And as far as like where to find me, it's at cultivate.your.space, um, cultivateyourspace.com. I mainly hang out on Instagram, but I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn, trying to get on the LinkedIn train. Um, but Instagram, Instagram stories is kind of where I like to hang out for better or worse on the algorithm. I've tried TikTok, but I'm too old. I can't dance, you know, I mean, I can dance, but I won't, I don't want to. Same, same, same. Um, yeah, this is, yeah, we have a lot in common. Um, this is a really cool just conversation. Thank you for kind of peeling back the curtain on your own business journey. I feel like it's always so interesting to hear the, it's just like such a journey. It's an adventure, us as business owners. So thank you for sharing that with uh, me and all of our listeners on the show. And everyone, make sure you go check out Michelle, Cultivate Your Space, everything that she's doing. Go look at her website. The photos are gorgeous. And thank you so much, Michelle, too, for being on the show today. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Bridget.